patients who develop anal cancer, we evaluate the extent of disease by staging them, looking at the size of their primary tumor and looking at if there are lymph nodes involved with cancer. And the staging will dictate the recommendations from a treatment perspective. When we think about treating anal cancer, cancers in the perianal skin are largely treated like skin cancers, with surgical excision being the primary recommended modality. But in patients who have bad anatomy or are unable to have surgery, radiation alone is recommended. There's a very rare subtype of anal cancer called anal adenocarcinoma. And this behaves and acts more like a rectal cancer and should be treated as such. Whereas squamous cell carcinoma of the anal canal is what we typically consider anal cancer. And these can be treated with local excision for very early stage, no negative patients. But for the vast majority of patients, this includes radiation with chemotherapy administered at the same time, reserving surgery for any incomplete responders or in patients where the tumor comes back. Well, historically, back in the 1970s, the treatment for anal cancer was surgery with the surgical removal of the anus and rectum, sewing the back end up, and giving patients the permanent colostomy or a bag to hold their stool. Dr. Nigro treat, reported on 28 patients treated with radiation and chemotherapy and found that in 86% of patients, the tumors melted away and patients were able to avoid surgery altogether. This report from Dr. Nigro changed the way anal cancer was managed. As historically back in the 1970s, the management of anal cancer was via surgery removal of the anus and rectum, sewing the back end up, and leaving patients with a permanent colostomy to collect their stool and feces. Here, Dr. Nigro's success highlighted the ability to use radiation chemotherapy to help eliminate the tumor and keep patients with their rectum and anus intact and functioning. The current guidelines now in the United States are based on Dr. Nigro's work, which includes radiation and chemotherapy given together to help eliminate the cancer and facilitate organ preservation. And what we know is that the earlier you seek out care and the earlier a cancer is found, the better your outcomes are. So a smaller tumor and no negative tumors have much higher rates of tumor control, survival, than patients who have larger tumors and node positivity. After completing definitive chemo radiation for anal cancer, it's important to make sure that you're checking in with your medical team to ensure that your side effects have resolved from treatment. And about 12 weeks after completing treatment, you'll undergo a reassessment to see how well the, the tumor responded to treatment. And some patients will still have some evidence of tumor after three months of completing treatment. But the vast majority of these will continue to go on to respond to treatment if given more time. At any time after completing definitive chemo radiation, if your tumor is enlarging or your symptoms are worsening, that's something to be concerned about and something to alert your primary medical team. While the outcomes for patients with anal cancer are excellent, what we do find is that it's important to also optimize organ function. So how do we do this? Well, we recommend that uh, male and female patients 
see pelvic floor physical therapists to awaken, re-stimulate, and train the pelvic floor muscles to ensure that your overall function is restored. We recommend that female patients see a sexual health uh, counselor for an assessment, as well as considerations of use of a vaginal dilator, vaginal moisturizers, or lubricants. And similarly, men can see a sexual health team to evaluate any issues with erectile dysfunction arising from treatment. So to conclude about anal cancer, it's really a multidisciplinary treatment modality is imperative. Thanks to Dr. Nigro, chemo radiation with curative intent remains the gold standard for patients who have newly diagnosed anal cancer. And overall, I hope I've can, I hope I've helped you understand that HPV is a significant cancer and non-cancer health burden, not only in the United States, but around the world. And HPV vaccination is an important step for you to consider for cancer prevention and to eliminate this from being a cause of concern. Current guidelines include the HPV vaccination as part of our routine childhood immunizations. And I encourage you to talk with your primary care physician and your child's pediatrician to discuss the risks and benefits of vaccination for your child. Thank you so much for your attention today. Please reach out with any questions.